because the management and transparency is what's very important. So once you submit a referral, you're going to have your own home advantage account and it's going to tell you where everything sits. So if you have 10 referrals that you've sent into the network, it's going to give you all 10 referrals. It's going to tell you every milestone that that client is sitting in, whether they're touring homes, whether they're in escrow. And you now can manage through the Home Advantage application as far as what your pipeline looks like for the referrals that you've sent. And so it's pretty sophisticated uh, and it's, it's all click of a button, guys. Artificial intelligence has been a wildly popular conversation nowadays, so much so that on a recent episode, we interviewed Chris Tam, who is one of the resident, I, I, I so eloquently describe him as geek, but he is really an expert. He understands technology as well as anybody in our industry, and he was giving suggestions on some of the AI platforms that you could be using. So I thought, you know what? I want to talk to somebody who is on the front lines, living in the game and using AI in their business. And so I reached out to my good friend, Martin Metzdorf, who is an area manager with USA Mortgage. He is uh, recently hired uh, Drunk on Social to help him with his video editing and growing his social presence. And one of the pieces to doing so is coming up with a consistent amount of content every single week, every single month, so that you can actually live up to what you want to do, which is increase your presence online and give our video editors what you're paying for. And so he's using AI exactly how we recommend using it uh, for a big portion of your business, which is brand awareness, which is for brand growth, uh, which is so many different things you can use in your business. And so today we're going to talk to Martin about exactly what he's using, how he's using it, some of the platforms that he's looking at. So you can literally take notes, write down these, these websites, write down these apps, write down these ideas and go emulate them in your business. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Mr. Metzdorf. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction, Mr. Fitzer. It's good to be here. So obviously we know each other well, and uh, I know there's uh, there's probably a handful of people out there using AI at a high level or using it. And I, I know you're one of them. And so I think this will be very beneficial to kind of break it down exactly what you're doing. And so for those of you that are listening to this, which I know is many of you, uh, Martin is going to be sharing a screen and showing some of the things that he's doing. Uh, so if you want to follow up after listening to this, if worthy, go check it out on YouTube, go look at what he's describing some of you I know are probably listening to this while you're in your car, driving, sitting in traffic. Some of you probably while you're on the treadmill. Others, I don't know what the hell you're doing while you're listening to this. But <laughs> if you don't have the ability to write notes, make sure you figure that out real quick. Push pause, grab a pen and paper, get out the note app on your phone because you're going to want to take notes. So, Martin, let's start from mm. the beginning. Let's cut straight to this and talk first about, all right, you say... I need to grow my brand. I need to grow my business. I need to grow my presence. And so I'm going to be creating at least 10 videos a month. That's where this started. And so, you know, you, you, you jumped right in. You said, I don't always have the creative genius to come up with content ideas. And that's where you turn to AI. Is that really where this started? What was kind of that, uh, that love affair with AI? Oh, hundred percent for me, Jeff. I mean, you, I'll, I'll remember when I signed up for coaching with you guys and we we're going through what I needed to create. And you're like, here's your content pillars. And then I would oh, get to the business and um, I'm an overthinker. I, I really dig into the details of stuff. And um, I think the best analogy I was taught, told by somebody is that you're telling people about the inside of baseball versus talking about the game of baseball and inside meaning like what the scorebook says, you know, a six, four, three double play. And so I, I equate that to mortgage what we're doing because I had to get out of my head. I remember, you know, the assistants and everyone there saying, Hey, when am I going to eat your videos? When am I going to get this from you? And I was like, man, what do I need to do? And I came across the first, very first site ever on AI. And this is what got my mind going. And it was syllabi IO. And in my head, I was wondering, well, how do I find out what people are really searching for and what do they want to hear? Right. Because I, I've done mortgages for 23 years. I can talk the ins and outs of details of mortgages almost to the point where it's above the reading level of most of our consumers. Right. So the value is all great to me. And when I got into syllabi, 
um, I can actually share my screen with you here. When I got into syllabi, it actually helped me see what, what people were searching for on Google. So that way I could start saying, okay, what do I want to create content around? And this is where it really uh, kind of got me going into AI. Uh, I don't want to say down a rabbit hole, but I, I really got into syllabi. Then I got into a couple others, chat GPT, and then super S and I'll show you those here. But let's just say if, if you're a real estate agent or you're, you're a loan officer, let's just say the first thing we want to know is uh, we are offering real estate services, right? And let me, uh, let me uh, digress for a half a second. Syllabi is where you turn to first. Syllabi, S-Y-L-L-A-B-Y. Yep. Uh, actually was founded by a good friend of ours. You, many of you know him, Austin Armstrong. It is built to help you create a social media strategy, and it does a ton of stuff. I bet you thought we were going to start with ChatGPT, uh, but here we are. Well, you know, and it's I, I started with Syllabi first because ChatGPT I had heard of, but it ChatGPT in its own it's like the next layer deep because you really got to understand how to use it. And it's, if you don't use chat GPT, right. It's just like using Google. It's asking it a bunch of mindless questions that aren't pulling together. What's your next step. And then I would find by the end of the day, all I've done is create all these ideas, but I have no executable plan. And so this is why I love syllabi. So if you're a real estate, you want to offer real estate services to home buyers, right? This is a, the service that you're offering. You're a realtor. And then your audience would be home buyers, or we could do home sellers. So here I'm going to click get ideas. And now this was the coolest thing. These are the top questions that come up in search. It shows the search volume, the cost per click if you're going to do advertising, the competition in these, and then more importantly, the number of search results. So this is really helping you understand what it is the market is searching for. So if if I was going down looking at this and I'm a real estate agent, I'm going to come back and say, okay, um, I'm going to look at what is a full service real estate brokerage first. I'm going to create a social strategy around that, which Syllabi will do all that for me. What is a service contract in real estate? Uh, what is debt service in real estate, right? I'm, so let's just come here. This is how easy Syllabi is. So what is a full service real estate brokerage? Come over here to this little calendar, click plus. We're going to save it to our calendar. And then all I'm going to do here is click AI outline. So you literally, to start this search off, all you had to do was put in real estate, essentially, mm -hmm. and and didn't even you didn't even give it any more details than that. And then it gives you ideas based upon what others are searching and using, et cetera. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So here's an outline that gives me, now I'm like, well, I want to do this in a video. Well, here's my video script. So I'm going to select the type that I want it to be, explain or tutorial, testimonial, social media videos. What tone do I want to have? Upbeat, professional, funny. Let's just do funny for the sake of it. And I want to, what, what time do I want this for? Many of you guys are maybe doing um, reels where you need 30 to 60 seconds. Um, if you're doing YouTube shorts, you know, maybe you want that time a little bit longer. So let's just do 30 seconds. Um, this is just the base that comes up. Now I want to regenerate the script. Amazing. There's so much, there's so much here. This is, this is crazy. And I bet, I bet a lot of our listeners have not even, have not even touched. If they, if they've even heard of it, they probably haven't touched this at all. That's pretty amazing. It, I mean, this, and it's this, this one piece of technology here was the first thing that got, it, it helped me go down the next steps of how do I create more content and just get it out there and post it. So here you go. Here's your 30 second video script, you know, that you could take this, um, copy it if you're a Mac user, put it into the notes section and then put it in a teleprompter, put it on your phone and hit record and read into this. And uh, then take this and you can, you know, use another type of AI editors. I don't use those. I use, you know, your, your team for that because I think it's better. Um, but this is how simple it is to generate a video script. And so let me ask you this. So when it comes to to creating a script, which, you know, I know ChatGPT and, and many other uh, AI apps can do the same thing. Are you taking these scripts verbatim or are you taking them and tweaking them to make them your own? I'm taking these and tweaking them to make my own. Great question. Um, I'll take and use this as kind of like the 80% of what needs to be said. And then I'll take the 20% and kind of make it my own, shorten it up, add a little of my humor to it or just my personality um, because I want people to get to know me truly. And that's what I really do with this. So I use this as a very, very... Um, tight outline. And then I'll make some adjustments where I think, okay, this isn't relevant to today's market. Uh, Cause one of the, the challenges with AI is it's really only up to date as of 2021. So anything 2022 and 2023, I mean, there's some, we can go down a rabbit hole on this. There's other plugins and things you can sign up for that pull relevant stuff, but 
just starting to use AI, I mean, this data is still relevant. And at least from syllabi, it's pulling, what are the relevant search terms people are wanting to see? So as, as we're talking about this as a way to create content for social media, for your business, for your marketing, you know, I, I think when, when I say things like, you know, you signed up for a package that you're going to be creating 10 videos a month. And I know on the surface, a lot of people think to themselves, well, that's, you know, 10 videos a month out of a 30 day month. That's not that much. But the one thing that we are finding, and I, and I'm sure most of you can either relate to this, or you're thinking what I just said, that is, it's a hell of a lot harder to come up with these ideas than you think. And then when you talk about scaling it to another level and maybe going to a video a day or a video every other day, you know, all of a sudden it becomes much more daunting. And I know Martin, you're one of them. Every one of our clients is one of everybody. We've never had one client where we didn't have to constantly poke them to say, where's your videos? Where's your videos? Where's your videos? Because this is it's it's absolutely necessary, but it's absolutely daunting. But it become it become a hell of a lot more less daunting by using something like this. So here's another. Yeah, I completely agree. And I mean, I'll pull up text messages of of in and the assistants p poking me. You know, I'll, I'll go on like two weeks where I'm just kicking butt, doing really well with this, and then life happens. You know, yeah. business happens, and you get derailed a little bit because there's just things that come up. But the nice thing is, I, I I'll even take and I can show you my chat GPT. Sometimes I'm still late at night having chat GPT on my phone, pulling up ideas and say, write an Instagram post on this. And I'll then kind of take and use the Instagram post as my video script. That's how this has kind of evolved for me is I've gotten used to really understanding what it is they need. And I've started to understand the content piece that people are looking for. So here's just another one, how to get listings as a new agent, right? This is just giving the, the breakdown of what you should talk about with on your content piece. And then here's a video script and we'll just do this one to 60 seconds. Explainer, upbeat, let's just do uh, tutorial, upbeat and uh, professional. We'll, go, we'll just, just so you can see different tones and it'll regenerate the script. This is how easy it was for me to get going and realize to, more importantly, just to get out of my head in co creating content. And there's a, uh, there's also an article uh, tab. Does that mean it's like writing a blog type post? Is that what that is? You know what? I believe so. I haven't gone that far with it because I just get right to the video piece. So uh, I'll be to be honest, I'm learning that piece on the fly with you. But again, this is just how easy it is to create a video scripts. So let's take a look at the article here, actually generate an article. So it's going to generate an article on how to get new listings as an agent. So yeah. we'll do this as uh, explainer. Yeah, just leave, just leave uh, them, just leave them as is. Yeah, that's fine. Just for the sake of seeing what it does, it's it's pretty fascinating. And and for those of you again listening, I mean, I hope we're doing a good job of kind of describing this to you. But you know, syllabi, I, and I think Martin, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a lot more to the platform because can't it write captions? So once you know, so now it's you're just creating, mm -hmm. you're just coming up with content ideas, but it can write captions, hash suggest hashtags, all sorts of things. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So it's it it's. It's like a one-stop shop for your social media strategy. Yeah, and it pulls it all together, whereas chat GPT, I would say, is going to be more for um, the more advanced users who really understand where they're taking each step. And that's where I, as I use syllabi enough and I use it to create enough video scripts, I'm like, okay, now I get this. And then I just, I'm you know always laying in bed or sitting around thinking about what's the next step and just kind of tinkering with stuff. That's where I got into chat GPT, chat GPT-4, and started asking really outside the box scenarios. You know, if we went to step eight or nine in the real estate process, for example, on the mortgage, like what, why do you, why is it important to use a professional lender versus an online lender? And how does it affect the closings or the um, uh, guarantee of the loan coming through? That's where I started getting deeper into stuff versus this high level content, which I think syllabi was great for. Yeah. Wow. That's, this is awesome. So, okay. So, so I think, I think that's, that's a good baseline on syllabi. I mean, this is a, a perfect example. If you can go back to the beginning uh, real quick and, and we can quickly just revisit walking someone through. So when you sign into to syllabi and you, you're, you're at this, you're at this kind of homepage or early, early stage page, you're literally just writing in a, a keyword or service offered and then mm -hmm. an audience. And that's it. You type, get ideas and it's going to run from there. Um, and then, so once, once you've got that, have you ever found it where you needed to run from syllabi over to another platform to kind of expand on something? What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, like, have you ever taken any ideas that you've gained here and then run over to chat GPT and had, had oh. chat GPT kind of expand on it? 
Yeah, that's where that's eventually where I got more ingrained into chat GPT is I, I got better at understanding how to use chat GPT. So um, for example, I had one that I wrote here, it was um it was on analysis paralysis of the market, right? Because I just feel like there's so many um uh news articles that are saying the market's bad and it's causing people to not take action in this opportunity of a housing market we have here. So I created something in syllabi and then I turned around, it gave me a video script and I turned around and used that same context, went into chat GPT and I put it in there and I said, write me a home buyer's guide of analysis paralysis list outlisting or outlining the top five reasons that you know people should buy a home today. And I, I actually did that as a social con by the way. <laughs> so I was sitting inside social con while you guys were giving the presentation there. And I wrote a home buyer's guide in a professional tone and in a funny tone. And all I had to do is turn around and give that to marketing. And, you know, they put, you know, nice pictures and stuff and, on there, but that's how easy it was to use. And that was through chat GPT. Yeah. I did syllabi first and then I used chat GPT to then create the actual guide for me and put stuff on that guide. So let's go over to just, so let's move, let's shift to chat GPT next. Uh, so again, uh, founded by OpenAI, uh, then then purchased by Microsoft and and inserted into Bing. You know, ChatGPT is is like you know Google, right? You go in there, you can ask it any various question, and within seconds, it's going to spit out a a reply, and then you can you can basically have a conversation with it, right? Mm -hmm. But let's focus on what you're using it for today. So you're showing us right now the the what you typed in uh, mm -hmm. says, write a professional home buyer's guide for how to overcome analysis paralysis when buying a home. And then when you look at this reply, it it gives him a title, an intro, and then how many steps? Uh, I see five on the screen. Now scroll down, eight, down eight steps, eight steps yep. plus a conclusion. If folks, if you know, you, you hear us say this all the time, Martin, I just got back, you know, depending on when this goes live on which, which podcast uh, medium, I just got back from Northern Virginia and was doing an event and was talking about AI. And the one thing I tell every audience, and you've heard this, not just from me, but from others that, you know, AI may not replace us, but the person using <laughs> AI will replace you. And so it's a matter of, you know, embracing AI. And if you're not tinkering with this. And I'm not talking about for entertainment. I'm talking about for legitimate uses for your business. I mean, this is a great example of something. Sh show us another one. What are some other examples of things that you've, you've chat GPT for? Oh, like for example, I used one on our USA mortgages, all cash offers, you know, this, cause I wanted, th this is, I wanted it to do a mass text out to realtors, write me an SMS message to a cold realtor lead showcasing USA mortgage cash offers which gets the realtor to respond or call, right? Like I'm so telling were, like what- Let's be very specific. Let me read this. He, so this is what he wrote. And think think of this as if you're a real estate agent, you think about in terms of uh, to, a, to a cold lead, to a cold home seller, to mm -hmm. a cold home, home buyer or renter, right? So Martin's case, write an SMS message, a text message to a cold realtor lead showcasing USA Mortgage Cash Offers program, which gets the realtor to respond or call. So he's very specific about what he's asking for. And I'll kind of walk them through this. Yeah. So I hit that. I, I hit that. It created this little hi, you know, realtor's name. Did you know USA Mortgage has an unbeatable cash offers program? Buyers get pre-approved funds, ensuring faster closings, no financing issues. Curious to learn more. Give me a call. Right. So then I'm like, cool. I like that. Now, if I also want to have my guys call these people, because some of them still call, let's rewrite it as a cold call script. And the whole point of this, where I really got my mind going this, you know, Ryan Cooper, uh, one of the guys that you met at SocialCon there, um, runs Dr. Emmy's. He he used to work for GoDaddy and where he was telling me about this nine months ago, he was teaching chat GPT prompts and how it would convert. And he found that what really took my mind to this when we were at SocialCon is he was talking about how they took old dead leads and they put this data into chat GPT and said, rewrite uh, or write a script to contact this lead from an email and write it to get them to convert. And they found that all these quote unquote dead leads Chat GPT was able to write a response to them to get these clients to trigger. And they had they had about a 70% response rate from these dead leads that were there that all of their salespeople said were no good. So to me, like if you're a realtor and you're doing online lead gen or you've got just leads that you feel are dead, there's a great way to type in what you know the end result is use chat GPT to really get into the human psychology to get them to respond to you, which at the end of the day is what we really want for conversations, right? And so that's how I where it kind of took me to the next level is how am I using chat GBT to be more specific? Like it's an employee telling it what I want it to do and what's my desired result I want from it.
not just like a Google search. Yeah. Wow. That's really awesome. Um, and so, you know, so this is a great example that it's not, you know, in this case is, as I mentioned in the onset, which is not just necessarily for script writing or I'm sorry, uh, social media script writing or video script writing, you're using it literally uh, for, for dialing for dollars and helping, uh, as you mentioned. So if you're a lead, uh, a team lead, for example, you could be helping your realtors uh, with scripts to work from the, when, when they're calling on customers. And here's another one. Give me, like I did this for hashtags just to what's to put in, um, you know, just to try and see what this is like. Give me 30 days to post to Instagram and use hashtags. You know, because sometimes we just need what are things for us to post yeah. that are non real estate related, non mortgage related, just to stay in front of our people. But this is the top 30 ideas that came up like a morning routine, share these things and then use these hashtags just to kind of get you in front of your people and being that constant, you know, top yeah. of mind. Yeah. Um, there's just there's an endless possibility with chat GPT. But I think the number one thing to take away from all this, you got to execute. You yep. got to take and actually make the video, make the other piece, which is going to engage with people or post it. I notice I'm noticing on the left side where you've got the chats, you've got some very geographically specific questions. Uh, maybe pull one of those up because for all of us in the real estate industry, you know, a geo strategy is, is super powerful. And, and here's an example that he just pulls up, write me an Instagram description about living in Gilbert, Arizona. And so this is basically, this is your caption, right? So I guess mm -hmm. you had a post and now this is the caption that goes with it. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, and actually part of these are things that we actually use to generate Facebook groups. Um, Facebook groups is a huge tool to engage in people moving to the area. And we actually created some special pages for Gilbert for a couple of other locations where our branches are at for people looking to move in those areas. And this is where we've used uh, chat GBT to get us a, a uh, Facebook, uh, the group, um, gosh, I can't talk oh, right now. So this gotcha. is why I use, this is why I use chat GBT is cause you can tell sometimes I get writer's block, right. Yep. Is to go over the descriptions to get people when they click on these groups to understand, Oh, what's it like to live in Air Gilbert, Arizona? What's it like to live in Wenatchee and then get them engaged to start scrolling on the page and engaging with our members. Like this is what I'm using for us to help really truly build out the marketing content. So good, man. I mean, there's 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 so many possibilities here. And and again, I cannot implore you enough as a listener, if you're not at least just playing around, literally go in. I've asked it the question, uh, and this is goofy, <clears throat> but I've asked the question like, who is Jeff Fitzer? Just to see what it would say. <laughs> yes. And and it would say, you know, at, at the time, I haven't done it in a while, but it didn't know who the hell I was. And then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to give it a little, you know, just give it some some little extra clues. And then once I did that, it started spitting out a bunch of stuff, which was fairly accurate. Uh, and it was just basically using the the title or or the company name to say, well, I, I don't know who the hell he is, but I'm going to guess that he must be an expert in blah, 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 blah. And it's just playing around with this stuff and seeing what what you can, you know, again, what you could possibly do with this, that it's just incredible. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, and there's, I'll, I'll come back to the mortgage and real estate side. You know, Fannie Mae has a big change with val, uh, valuation modernization and getting rid of the appraisals and moving more towards automated values. And I wanted to know, this is where I just wanted to see what did chat GPG say? How would this affect the real estate market? It was pretty interesting going over positive and negative impacts. I mean, I hope what people are really hearing from this is don't just think of this. You should throw everything you can at here. If you have a question, be very specific on what you want from it and what you think could happen. Ask it to give you the positive and negative so you can turn around and then just put this in video, a blog content and share it with your people. That's amazing. Yeah, it's 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 really good. And 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 like you mentioned, it's the cutoff is uh, well on the free version, September of 2021. And so anything more recent than that, right, is not necessarily going to be up to date yet. Um, and, or, or you got to give it more context when it doesn't know, basically, right? Yeah, you do. You do have to give it some context and lead it down a path. Um, you know, that's 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 what I've noticed more as I've played around with it and really gotten comfortable with chat GPT. Uh, you really need to be specific like you're telling it and it's an employee treat chat GPT as an employee for you and you'll get the best results from it. And I want to get, I'm going to share an example, just a stupid example here, just, just for giggles. And again, this is the free version of chat GPT. So I, I did the same thing. I rewrote who is Jeff Fitzer of drunk on social. So I was specific about that same, same general answer. It says my cutoff is September 2021. I couldn't find any specific information, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, and then it says, if you can provide more details or context, it says I might be able to assist further. Then I go up to the top right where it's got these different options of please continue, clarify, exemplify, expand, explain, rewrite, shorten, tweetify. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to click tweetify and see what it does. So I clicked it and it, and then it says, so it automatically puts in the request, please make this into a tweet with only one hashtag max use appropriate emojis. Okay. That's freaking cool. Yes. And, and then there's, here's his response. Just discovered Jeff Fitzer, the social media maven behind hashtag drunk on social. <laughs> his, his insights and strategies are mind blowing. Stay tuned for some serious social media inspiration. Hashtag social media guru. I mean, dude, that's pretty good, man. The social media maven. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to share that one, man. I, I, I didn't say anything. That's all I said is who is, and I'm just, and I'm just, playing with it because i'm kind of just you know testing it. like what can you come up with and of course there's there's emojis in here it's you know drunk on social it has it has a, a wine glass emoji next to a cell phone emoji and then the mind blowing of course it has the mind blown emoji i mean dude it's so so crazy man it's it's really really cool stuff i mean it's it's great so um so that's what i've used chat gpt and then syllabi and that's kind of my journey with how it's turned into there and then i've I've gone down to plenty of rabbit holes with these things. I mean, just getting into AI and seeing what it can do. I mean, I think there's a lot of AI that people are definitely the the trends picking up and now they're starting to sell and, and get you to to buy stuff that I don't know necessarily everyone's gonna need. It's gonna get really niche. But I think if you really start using the the pillars of AI for content creation, um, you're gonna be a head of 80% of the people out there. Yeah, uh, I would say even more so than that. It's it's crazy good. So, all right, what um what else have you been playing around with? So we've got syllabi. Uh, everybody is which may may or may not everybody may not know about, and then that will create a social media strategy for you very simply with very little information. And then you're taking your you know obviously you're going down that that um that rabbit hole as you as how you describe it, and it writes you scripts and it can write you blog articles and it can do all this. It can give you an outline. And then in some cases you're taking it over to chat GPT and expanding even further. What is another platform that you're using as you continue down your own personal journey? So here's another platform. It's called a uh, super us um, app.com. And this super, is one. Oh, let me spell that super S U P E R U S A P P. Yep. Dot com. .com. Got it. And I'm a visual person, so I need to see like here's step one, step two, step three, and then where do things kind of branch off? So if anyone was ever like a Microsoft Visio flowchart person, um, this I thought was super or thought is super cool because it allows me to, and I'll just use in this situation here, I said mortgage lender strategies to recruit realtors because I'm trying to help, you know, my team. I mean, I've got a, a book of realtors I've used. I've been doing this 23 years, but as I'm, you know, coaching my team and coaching new recruits and LOs who've shifted from this, you know, refi boom to now they have to get real, real estate agents to really work with and solidify their purchase business. I wanted them to see what are some different things that can be done. And so uh, if I if I kind of come down the path here, what happens at the end of each one of these blocks when you do it is there's this little dot. So let me show over here on the right. So like right now we just did, um, you know, one of the things we can do is online resources, right? Because online guides, frequently asked questions, video tutorials. If I click this video tutorials, hold on here. It's not give me what I want. Here we go. Click this video tutorials. You notice there's this little blue dot that comes up and I can click plus. Then from here, I can ask the AI about the selected card, or I can have it help me brainstorm the selected card, and we can summarize the topics on the selected card. So in this case, let's talk about some more video tutorials that we can do. Help me brainstorm. And this is what I think is super cool is that you're taking in something visual, walking down the next steps, and then using AI like you would in ChatGPT and or syllabi to build out what you need to do in that next step. So in the, probably the next five to 10 seconds here, we'll have this pop out. So here we go. So the benefits of the mortgage process video tutorial, right? You could do a video on the benefits of the mortgage process. Um, topics to cover in the mortgage process include different types of mortgages, application process, and how they qualify for a mortgage. So again, this is something that I'm using with my team to help them see this is all the stuff they can use to start creating and see it in a visual way. So what's step one, two, three, four, and five? Could you I use this or do you use this to create presentations as well? I mean, this is a pretty... This is a pretty robust flow chart. Yeah, it's, you know, I don't see why we couldn't use this part itself in the presentation. Um, this is something that I've been using as of like a week ago and just kind of going down a rabbit hole on there. But it's something that's got me excited enough about it to at least sign up for the paid version of it. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah. I mean, so, it's it, yeah, that's really cool. What is the cost of this one? Uh, I think this one was like nine ninety nine a month, so it's pretty inexpensive. Ten bucks. Yeah. How many of these platforms are you running into uh, now have cost associated with them? I'm going to say about 85 to 90% of them have costs associated with them if you want to get outside the free. But getting outside the free and having a either a 10 to $20 a month cost is really what unlocks the tools that you want to have access to. The free stuff is just kind of like the scratch and sniff. It gives you it gets you excited enough and then you get to the part where you're really going to use it and you're like, oh, I got to pay 15 or 20 bucks a month to use this tool. So that's why I, I'm definitely starting to see there's more and more people creating similar AI tech that does the same thing. And they're all just using it as like a subscription base to try and create money. Um, and so that's where I think the more you go down the rabbit holes of what is it you want your AI to do, I, I think it's always going to come back to the pillars, which is really going to be chat GPT based. So it's, it's really, I think I, I took what you're saying there is, is don't get lost or too caught up in paying for every single app. You really need to dial in you know, one at a time, get it really flowing for you and then maybe move forward to another one, correct? Yeah, I mean, really understand what is your purpose with AI? What is it you wanna use it for? And I, that's where Syllabi really helped me go down this journey because I was able to ask myself, what am I really using this piece of AI for? You know, there's some video editing stuff, which I think is, is great to have it out there. I don't use it because I think that our video editors personally are better in what it does because it's not just trying to create something quickly that is going to be mainstream where pretty, I mean, when I started using our video editing, I had a lot of people come to say, man, what are you using for that? Where are you doing it? And next thing you know, I see a ton of AI apps that are doing the video editing and they do it maybe about 60% and has the same look to it. But when you really get into it, it doesn't have the same pattern interrupts. It doesn't use um, some outside images that really are going to connect locally. And so that's where I think that the AI can help for the masses. But if you really want to be awesome at this stuff, especially on real estate, on mortgage and your video standout, I think you're still going to need to use a professional editor. Yeah. it's, it's So that's why I haven't used the AI video editing, but I see a lot of people using it. Yeah. And, and since you brought that up, I mean, there's a couple of things to comment on that. I mean, first of all, there are, there are several platforms. I'm not sure if you have played around with, uh, for example, video.ai. So V-I-D-Y-O.ai. It's, it basically chops up a long form video and gives you short form clips. So think podcast. Uh, you, you could record a podcast, you re record a five to 10 minute video, you put it in there and it's going to chop it up into anywhere from five to 25 short form videos. Mm -hmm. The one thing that we have learned with that one, for example, is that you really have to then now, so that it saves you a lot of time by doing that because that's time consuming. But when you actually get down to brass tacks and review the short forms that they gave you, you're probably only going to use 10 to 15% of them, maybe 20% of them. And so you've got to now review all of those videos. Tristan and I were talking about this recently, and I said, this is where the human element is still going to be very critical because there's still... Yeah, sure. Push a couple buttons, spit out some stuff. But if you're not going to take the time to review it, you're going to end up just pushing out a bunch of garbage content and you're just going to make you look worse. And so there's still a, a large human element. Martin has mentioned editing. There's editing options. There is caption options. And all of it is perfectly fine. However, just like anything, it's going to become massively diluted. A lot of people are going to be using it. And if you really want to stand out, if you really want to stand above, uh, and and let me just say this: If you're creating video, adding bubbly captions, you know, including some edits, you're ahead of the game. So I applaud you for that. But if you want to go even further, as Martin knows, as we talk about all the time, is you got to have a lot of pattern interrupts. And AI is not built yet to build in and add in all these different several second pattern interrupts and B-roll and 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 have more lively captions, not just captions that are just saying what you're saying. There's more to it than that. And um, it just depends on what level you want to be at. There's no right or wrong level. The wrong level is doing nothing. The right level is doing something. And so vidyo.ai is a great one. Martin, have you uh, looked at uh, Descript at all? That's another one. I have not looked at Descript. I have been looking at, uh, what was this one out here? It's called, I thought it was called Munch. Yeah, Munch. Munch is yeah. pretty cool. Tristan Tristan was showing that one. And I was really thinking of you have a lot, a lot. We could use this video, for example, take this video, put it in a Munch, and it would break it up into do, you know, short form 30, 60 second um, or one minute clips for YouTube shorts or whatever. So I was looking at things like that because for me, it's 
taking the content you do once that you can repurpose multiple different platforms. And, you know, as we've really gotten into just the, the social piece and understanding the best way to use it, it's not about the vanity. I mean, I don't really care about likes or comments anymore. If I get them great, it's really more about constantly staying top of mind and seeing the number of views you're getting. I mean, I've got some videos that'll do 800 and got a couple others that if you're just doing some of this non AI based stuff and you're just doing remixes, you're getting over 60,000. So yeah. um, it, for me, I think this stuff is great to help post in multiple platforms so you can be where your audience or your tribe is for you. And that's what I, I think the power is behind the AI. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's really cool. Is there any so so this D script, by the way, is video editing um it, as all as well as uh an overdub of voice or text, um, or voice on text, I mean. So you can actually add a, a voice. You know, a, a, it doesn't have to be your voice. It can be AI generated voice, which I don't recommend, but it, it is an option. Uh, another one uh, that, that Chris talked about was Mid Journey, where you can uh, you can do image creation, graphic creation. Have you ever messed around with Mid Journey at all? I have not messed around with Mid Journey yet. Yeah, so that's another one. Uh, you know, you can change a photo into something else. It's good for websites. It's good for newsletters. Um, he was showing an example almost from an architectural standpoint, like, okay, I have this image of a property, right? And it's just a basic backyard. And he would ask Midjourney, now now show show me uh, what the backyard would look like if I included, added a pool and a putting green. And then it gave like five or six options of images of what it could look like, a rendering. And yeah. I was like, holy crap, man, this is amazing. I've, I've seen something very similar. I don't know if it's that specific tool, but yeah, where you're able to take a backyard. And I mean, as a real estate agent, that's definitely helping people see past what maybe a, you know, a non-updated backyard looks like and moving to the next stage in their house buying process. So yeah, yeah like giving people a vision. Yeah. Yeah. Like where, what, what could a pool look like out here and what could this potentially cost? I mean, that's, I think everyone's in the, such the dreamer state that they want to, you know, how can they make their lives better and enjoy a family fun time? It's a great way to let them see it and then become attached to it. Yeah. Totally. Last one I'm going to share, uh, Martin, is Tome. I think, I don't know if it's pronounced Tome or Tomey, but it's T-O-M-E dot app. And it's good for creating presentations with words and images very quickly. Uh, so it's, if you, if you've got to put together a presentation for clients um, or for your office or for your, you know, your, your, your team, uh, you should try this one out. So it's T-O-M-E dot app. T-O-M-E dot app. Mm -hmm. it's another one. And check this out right now. Yep. This is, see, this is the hard part with AI is these rabbit holes I get down and it's like, well, the next thing you know, I spent all day and I'm like, oh man, I actually got to get back and move some work too. <laughs> I was going to say, I think it's important because AI is now becoming similar to what social media has become, which is, which is, could be a time suck. And, and so you have to be very intentional about how you use this stuff. And not to mention beyond that, beyond the time suck aspect, there are going to be thousands of copycats because creating an AI platform is actually relatively doable for most companies. And so you're going to find that a lot of companies, I mean, our, our platform called Business Video School is building its own AI uh, platform within Business Video School because it makes sense. It's going to help with script writing and things like that. Uh, so you really have to kind of wade through the noise to figure out, okay, what can I use uh, most most effectively? And I think for many, Martin, I, correct me, if I'm wrong, I guess it depends on what you're using it for. I, I think ChatGPT is probably one of the most broad-based options right now. Um, you know, again, syllabi is going to be great for a social media strategy. Uh, just playing around in Google and and playing around with Bard. You know, Bard is now being built into Google, and it's going to have the same functionality as the ChatGPT. I think, uh, you know, I think just just becoming familiar with it and accustomed to it is what best are going to do right now. That's probably what's most important. Is there, is there anything I'm missing? Anything that, um, that you would suggest that I did not mention or that you're using or you're, you're toying with that, uh, our audience might be interested in? Um, I'm to actually toying with one called lingo sync. Um, and lingo sync will take and write, where was it out here? So oh, lingo sync. Lingo sync. S Y N C. Got it. Um, it's, Basically, it takes your videos and will translate quickly into 40 different languages. Um, you know, so for me, there's a large Hispanic population out here in Arizona that I want to be able to serve. And we work with some of the agents. And I think being able to quickly be able to translate a video to them to get them on a hook, I think is huge. Because even though I may don't speak fluent Spanish on the back, and I speak enough to get them connected with the right people. And that's something I think is of interest, just as our world in the US, we have more languages coming. I think being able to help and have your content in different languages, I think adds more value to you. That's I don't know, something I have, something I'm going down the rabbit hole on. 
I love it. I love it. Well, so Martin, uh, you know, obviously this is, this is good. I know you're using it uh, for a very specific purpose and, you know, I've heard of some other agents using it for, uh, you know, creating presentations or creating, uh, you know, uh, articles or blog posts or, or that sort of thing. Um, I think the, we're barely scratching the surface for what AI is going to do. And, and frankly, AI is also going to be, it's going to cause some serious issues. And we've talked, I think we talked about, I think I talked about it with Chris on the last episode, which, which is the voice AIs where, where you're going to just get a massive amount of fraud uh, going on in the world because the, the scammers of the world are going to, are going to use your voice to call on maybe your relatives and tell them that, you know, you're in trouble and send me money. And you're going to get people that just aren't familiar with this stuff that get scammed. And, and so I think, you know, a lot of this is not just for growing your business, but also educating your family and friends and the people around you, the people that that maybe aren't entrenched in an industry like ours, which is talking about AI at such a high, fast paced level. And, um, you know, on a personal level, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of uses to make sure you're, you're, you're being the uh, poster child for, for everyone around you. You know, I agree with you on that. It's almost like we're going to have to have like a two-step verification process for phone calls when people say they're in need, right? I mean, you know, you have that on Amazon, you have it on Prime and, you know, they want a passcode for you to sign in from this device. And I think that to that point, because it is opening a lot more fraud, I've heard quite a few horror stories of it of where somebody calls up grandma and they say, hey, I need, you know, I need some money. And it seems pretty legit because it sounds like them, but making them having a code word set up for family, I think, or friends, you know, when, when you're in emergency could be a great way to realize like, is this a scam or not? But um, to your point on AI, I think that there's a lot of fear about replacing humans, right? And I don't think it's going to replace humans. I think what it's going to do is it's going to replace the cumbersome work that humans have to do. And if you really learn, and this is just my opinion, learn to look at managing AI as your job, and managing the relationship, you're going to be further along than anybody else. Yeah, totally agree. Very, very, I mean, that's a great way to describe it in a, in a much simpler way is, is uh, you know, those that embrace it are going to set themselves apart and they're going to create the efficiencies in their business where you might get stuck. And, um, you know, for, for many of us, AI is creating an opportunity to do some things that we've never had the bandwidth to do. And and now we do. And, you know, Martin, if I had asked you two, three years ago, are you going to have a social presence like you have today? Mm-hmm. You know, you probably would have said, I don't know, whatever you're smoking, you know, give me some of that and and look what it has now created. Because without it, I'm not sure if you'd be where you are uh, in terms of the content creation. And so it's 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 really, really incredible. And I, and I implore anybody who who listened to this. If you want to make, if you didn't take notes and you want to see some of the things that Martin was showing, make sure you go check this out on YouTube. Uh, whether you're listening to this in Lab Code Agents or Drunk on Social, it'll be both places. Uh, so go check it out. Martin, if somebody wants to connect with you, if they got questions, what's the best way to do so? Uh, they can look me up on Instagram, Martin Metz, Martin underscore Metzdorf. Uh, Facebook, Martin Metzdorf. Just DM me. Um, you know, if you want to go old school, we can get you my email out there, martin at usa-mortgage.com. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty easy. A simple Google search. I think you can find me. Love it. Perfect. Martin, I appreciate it. You know what? This is going to probably be just like with Chris Tam, an ongoing conversation. So we'll have to bring you back in a number of months and see where how you've kind of evolved and what's changed and what you're using and what you've thrown out. And uh, let's uh, continue to educate the real estate industry and hope uh, to help some people elevate their, uh, their, ba- their brand. Looking forward to it, Jeff. Thanks, brother. Thanks. Agents Podcast.